All right, moving on. Our next speaker is uh, Gabe Conway, who's going to be uh, talking about uh, Bradley Manning. But before I introduce him, I'm going to go ahead and read uh, Bradley Manning's bio. Um, PFC Bradley Manning is a U.S. Army intelligence analyst who released, who released to the public in late 2009 the classified video, Collateral Murder. Uh, that video, I don't know if any of you have seen it, but it shows uh, uh, a helicopter shooting on uh, civilians. Um, and in 2010, he released at least 90,000 pages of classified documents known as the Iraq and Afghanistan War Logs through WikiLeaks, the single largest leak of classified documents to be made public since the release of the Pentagon Papers in 1971 by Daniel Ellsberg. Manning has been held in military prison for over a thousand days without trial in violation of the U.S. Constitution. Nominated for 2013, or in 2013 for the Nobel Peace Prize. His trial begins in the June of 2013. So, uh, without further ado, uh, Mr. Gabe Conway is an organizer organizer with Canvas for a Cause, an LGBT nonprofit, and a member of the San Diego Coalition to Free Manning. He's been active in the anti-war movement and broader struggle for social justice for six years. He is on the steering committee of SANE, an alliance of LGBT activists and a allies in the fight for queer liberation, and a proud and long-standing member of the San Diego Co Coalition for Peace and Justice. So without further ado, Mr. Gay Conway. All right, so like Jan said, uh, this week marks the 10th anniversary of the illegal invasion of Iraq. Um, I want to start out by pointing out a reality that the Obama administration has been doing its best to distort, and a reality that Obama supporters um, must suspend to believe. Um, that's the false narrative that Barack Obama ended the war in Iraq. In fact, the Obama administration negotiated desperately to keep thousands of troops in Iraq. <clears throat> Not only did Obama want to continue the war, but he insisted that the U.S. armed forces be granted legal immunity for any crimes they had or might commit. This was unacceptable for the Iraqi government. Why? Because a young army private disclosed further evidence of atrocities committed by the U.S. military. <clears throat> for example, in 2006, American soldiers conducted a violent raid where 11 civilians, half of them children, were rounded up and killed. These included a woman in her 70s and at least one infant shot at close range. The soldiers then called in an airstrike to destroy any evidence of this shameful massacre. The high profile release of, of cables by WikiLeaks generated attention and disgust in Iraq, which made it politically unpalpable for the Iraqi government to grant crimin a criminal blank check to the Obama administration, uh, the criminal blank check the Obama administration was seeking. Um, opponents of Manning and transparency and power argue that Manning should have gone to um, superiors with the disturbing information like this. And the simple answer to that argument is Manning did. When Manning saw 15 Iraqi citizens um, that had been round up and detained for nothing more than disseminating scholarly critiques against the Maliki government, and knowing what happens to individuals in Iraqi detention, Manning went up to chain of command. Manning was told to shut up and continue aiding the same Iraqi federal police who were targeting innocent people. Now at collateralmurder.com, um, you can see this video. It's a video uh, of the US military committing three um, clear violations of the Geneva Convention. Um, thanks, for, thanks to Manning, we now know that our government has an official policy to ignore and hand over detainees to torturers, and, uh, which is another violation of international law. Um, I, I, I won't go into the long list of other crimes and wrongdoings exposed by Manning. We'd be here all weekend. <clears throat> I will only say that what I've already spoken about should be enough to grant Manning's release, along with the Nobel Peace Prize, a prize with which Manning has been nominated for the third year in a row. After Manning's recent testimony in, uh, in court, um, a testimony that matches exactly the motives expressed in private chat logs years ago, we know that without a doubt, Manning is a whistleblower, of the most honorable attention, intentions, and an American hero who sacrificed career and liberty for the public good. So what does a selfless whistleblower get um, for sacrifices like this in Obama's America? You get over a thousand days now behind bars. 
You get solitary confinement in a six by eight foot cell, zero privacy, round the clock monitoring, sleep and sensory deprivation, forced nudity, and other humiliating and degrading treatment. And this was all done for three reasons. To send a message to anyone with a conscience who may have the courage to stand up for what's right, to break Manning into giving up information on the whistleblowing website WikiLeaks, and as Chris Hedges recently put it, to extinguish what is left of a free press, one that has the constitutional right to expose crimes by those in power. Um, Barack Obama has charged seven people so far under the Espionage Act, over twice as many as any other admi uh, administration. The latest whistleblower, a former CIA analyst who exposed the U.S. government's use of torture, began serving a 30-month prison sentence the same day that Manning recently gave the testimony um, in court. Um, when one of uh, Manning's strongest supporters, uh, pending on papers, leaker Daniel Ellsberg, was asked, how does the treatment of Manning by the liberal press, by, by the New York Times, and by Democratic lawmakers compare to how you were treated back in the 70s, uh, he answered pretty much the same. Uh, Thomas Drake, another whistleblower, who exposed waste, fraud, and abuse and illegality involving warrantless wire wiretapping at the uh, National Security Agency, finds what Manning did, quote, an extraordinarily brave and courageous act. All that other stuff, he says, all the personal, all the psychobabble in terms of cause and what could have led to it, um, where, where, where his head was at, all that was, was, was much distraction. Drake recounts, um, when his home was raided by the FBI, the establishment media parrots speculated wildly about everything from child pornography to domestic abuse to selling secrets to the enemy. Now I'll wrap up by saying, uh, in Manning's case, um, the media elites have employed homophobia, transphobia, and downright lied about Manning's character. And what's probably the worst of all is that they, in many cases, um, ignored the story altogether. Let's face it. The U.S. media is the, the U.S. military is the last place that one wants to come to terms with sexuality or gender identity. But Manning isn't just an LGBT veteran. Unlike most Americans who go to war based on lies, ignorance, or dishonorable intentions, Manning committed an act of defiance that sacrificed future, safety, and life for everyone in this room, everyone in this country, and everyone worldwide who lives under the boot of U.S. imperialism. Um, and finally, uh, Manning's court-martial starts in June. There will be a rally here. We'll have ongoing events. <clears throat> um, if you want to catch up on uh, Manning's whole story, uh, BradleyManning.org is, is the best resource. If you're here in San Diego, FreeManningSD.com is, um, is what, where we're organizing. And um, uh, some of uh, uh, our, our activists are going to pass out um, one easy way you can help. Um, this week, if you call basically the, the highest up general who has the say on Manning's, on Manning's fate, basically, um, General L Lennington, um, there's three, three phone numbers you can call and uh, demand that the aiding the enemy charges be dropped um, for PSC Manning. Thank you.